Hello, my name is Cynthia Rowland. I'm one half of the Ageless Sisters, and today I'm interviewing Lori Arias. And Lori was one of the contestants on The Swan. So welcome. Thank you for having me. My absolute pleasure. You have quite a story to tell because I realized that you um, wanted something new in your life after your husband passed away. Your son actually recommended that you contact the television show, The Swan. Yes, you did that. You were chosen. And then all of a sudden, you began to have lots of plastic surgery. That is very true. Lots. Lots. Let me just ask you a couple of questions. Are you happy with your results from your cosmetic surgery? Um, I'm, I'm happy-ish with it because um, I've had some complications. Mm -hmm. And mentally, it's done a number on me because I see everything now. I see things in other people now. So it's, it's um, I don't know, it's just a little mentally, mentally challenging. Okay. When you began the, to work with the people on the swan, you were sequestered, I suppose, somewhere. Yes. And you were not allowed to see any of the results that they were creating for you. Exactly. And you told me earlier that you started with your lips, and then what? And they, then your chin. Yes. Wow. And then what else did they do? Um, that was the first surgery. Oh. Oh, okay. That was the lips, the chin, and the butt lift and the thigh tuck. You had a butt lift too, I and a, a thigh butt. lift. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. How can you sit down with that? Um. I just did. Mm -hmm. I had a geriatric toilet, yeah. <laughs> a high-rise right. toilet, and right. um, my roommate actually had to help me in the bathroom. And so, um, so you're probably all bandaged here, bandaged here. Yeah, I was okay. bandaged here. I had a the the elastic headgear, and um, I was bandaged all the way around. It's like they cut my body in half mm -hmm. and put it back together. Mm -hmm. And the scar run, ran down through the groin, up toward the butt. Mm -hmm. So it's just a whole, a whole, uh, a whole lot of uh, scarring and stitches. Oh, yes. You still have a lot of scarring. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Especially on the back yeah. and on my left hip. It, and don't you have some problems there right now with it, your back and hips and things? Yes, my, my left hip, um, the skin has grown so thin that if it, if it continues to ulcerate, because it, it does from time to time, mm -hmm. it's almost against the bone and it can just rip open. I actually saw a picture of that somewhere on tele, or online and it was amazing that you're able to actually function and walk around having an open abscess like that. It is. Um, I don't. I don't do much because of the um, the pain. Mm -hmm. so sometimes, so um, I just try to live through it. Yeah. So okay. So go back to your experience again. Here you are having this, these procedures done. They did the hips, the thighs, the face first parts of the face. What else, what was the next thing they did? And how long was, were you healing before they allowed you to have another surgery? Oh, well, um, I was the only swan in the history of the show that was a, 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 that had three parts. And I had the most surgeries of any. And um, so it was every two weeks. Every two weeks you'd go under and have multiple surgeries seven, eight, nine hours, um, you know, under the knife. And um, so the second one, I'm trying to think, it's been, it's been a while. I believe it was a facelift, the brow lift, and the eyes. And the eyes. Is that a painful procedure? Um, it is. It's uncomfortable. Yes. And the nose job, that's uncomfortable. Wow. And so did they have you sleeping, sitting up for those first few days that you had had that facelift and nose and all of that done? Well, we were lucky enough for the first two days after surgery to um, be in a penthouse at the W Hotel. And, um, <laughs> and so we had a nurse 24 hours there 
But once we got back to the pond, is what they called it. Um, what was the pond? The pond, the swan pond. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh I see. Where they kept you regularly. Oh, yeah. Then the Swans then, in training or whatever. Then we really had nothing. The nurses would, would come in every once in a while, but it wasn't. Um, my roommate took care of me more mm -hmm. than their nurses did. Mm -hmm. I even um, had some... Uh, my um, drains fell out. It unstitched and came out, and they're like, "You just have to deal with it till tomorrow." I'm like, well, infection can set in, you know. But they didn't. Okay. Yeah. But you you came out without any infection, though, right? I Except did. for your hole in your side. Yeah. And they have very so many years later. We want to make sure that everybody knows Lori's husband had passed away two years before she became one of the girls on the swan. So there was a lot of devastation in your life at that point, losing your husband, but also you lost 120 pounds and Correct. you had a body that had a lot of loose skin. Exactly. And um, I'll tell you that um, I haven't mentioned this part in any interview ever, okay. that um, besides being abused by my mother, I was also sexually abused as a child. So, um, there was a lot that I had to deal with, and what they would do is they would open a door to each hurt and leave it open. So, let me get this right. So, they had you in counseling, you were talking about these things that had occurred to you, right. but you never felt there was any resolution? No, because each visit was a different part of the show. I see. So, they would just film that, and then you're left hanging with your right. feelings. Right, exactly. And then nobody's finishing their job to help you uh, deal with all of that. Exactly. It was unethical and devastating. I'm so sorry to hear that. You know, television shows like The Swan, they have a lot of viewers because people want to see what other people are undergoing, especially transformational surgery like you went through. If you had to do over again, would you do that again? Would you let them do that for you? Um... Well, considering how my brain works now mm -hmm. and how I think and see things differently, you know, I don't want to get a wrinkle. I'm afraid of that. Um, I think of, you know, in a few years I'll be able to get the discount at Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, to go back and look my age, I, I, that for that for that reason, I would do it again. Now you don't tell your age, do you? Oh um, yeah, 42. 42. 42. 42. And you've had a lot of work done? I've had a lot of work done. What's the best success that you had from this surgery? The best surgery? No, the best. Yeah, which one do you like the most? Your breasts? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I saw you on TV. <laughs> you're kind of like, mm, I kind of like these babies, these little Oh, yeah, girls. That, that's my um, that's my thing. I'm always touching my <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's your body. You can do that. Yeah. So what do your sons think about this transformation? Have they been really supportive still for you? Um, now they are. At first, um, they were terrified of me. They were terrified. My little one um, was still little enough to, to be clingy, but my older son said, our dad died, now they took our mom. Yeah, and I couldn't change it. I couldn't reverse it. I mean, um, I tried at Reveal at Reveal on, on the Swan, um, as soon as the the taping of that was over, I screamed and I ran, and um, I demanded my face back, the old one, and um, had to talk to a psychologist from Fox and all that, and, um, and my son didn't like it. Of course, now they do. It's now, different. Oh, now They've they do. They've grown up and things have changed a little bit. Yeah, I'd, I'd say, or I do say, I'm like, would you want to hang out with this mom or this one? And they laugh at the other picture now. Mm -hmm. I saw your before photo. I thought you were very beautiful. Oh, thank you. For women who are considering plastic surgery, and I know that there are a lot of people out there that right. consider plastic surgery, and they probably don't have someone to pay for the surgery like you had. That was probably saved you $100,000 or so, mm. right? They said it was around three hundred. Wow. Because it's expensive stuff. What do you want to say to women today that are looking at themselves in the mirror 
and they see sagging and some wrinkles and is it worth it? Well, um, I'm not going to lie and say that um, if I see somebody that I think needs Botox or has eye bags mm -hmm. that, um, that they could, you know, take care of that. But like you said, if somebody isn't there to pay for it, they may um, choose a really cheap doctor. And even though I had the best, I still have um, complications and face numbing. I can't feel a lot of the top of my head. And I can just imagine what, what they would go through trying to, um, to save. You bring up a very in interesting point because, you know, we have seen celebrities. All to, I mean, we live here in the L.A. area, so we see celebrities frequently. And we recognize that they've had work done. Mm -hmm. And some of it's not very good work. And I always think that, oh my goodness, these celebrities have a lot of money. Right. Oh my goodness, I, somebody I know like Priscilla Presley has scads of cash. And yet she got with a doctor who didn't do her right. And I'm exactly. sure that on that show, they made sure that you had the finest physicians there. They did. And they never really know when things might go wrong. Exactly, and things weren't explained. They weren't explained. When you're just shuffled in Hollywood. It's just shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And so you are told you're going to have this done, that done, whatever. And not knowing anything about surgery or the industry or whatever, you just do it. So the experience that you had at the Swan and your own experience of plastic surgery, you're not so thrilled about recommending plastic surgery to your friends or to people, but you would say, hey, if you have eye bags, you could... Go get those fixed. And they could. They exactly. could. Exactly. Yes. How many women, and were there any men, on the television show The Swan? How many people went through this? Um, there were 16 shown. Two were completely made over, but they didn't get a show. They didn't get put on TV. Really? They were told to say that they've never, that they never was on The Swan ever. And, um... So they, from Reveal, were sent home. Hmm. Have you been in, in, in touch with any of these other contestants? Oh, definitely, definitely. I'm still really great friends with Kim Wilborn. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I don't talk to my roommate very much, Carrie Bravada. But, um, but yeah, I mean, Kim's enough. She's cool. <laughs> and so what's your experience of their results? Was everyone thrilled? With their complications, will people go back and have more surgery? You know, I've heard of a, of a nose collapse. <clears throat> I've heard of um, a breast um, um, abscess where they had to redo them themselves. They had to go to their own to their own doctor, and um, yeah, teeth falling out. I had a tooth fall out, and um, did they give you new teeth? No. Well, they gave me new teeth on the swan, but when that one fell out. They didn't do anything. The actual tooth fell out or just the cap came off or what? The um, the veneer fell off, but they whittled it down to a little stick. So. Oh, that's cute, isn't it? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, geez, if any more of my teeth fall out, you could park me on the porch at Halloween and I could just sit there and be the jack-o'-lantern. But, um, but yeah, there was no um, maintenance money or anything. Mm -hmm. So what did you learn from this, Lori? What did you learn about yourself, too? Um, well, I learned that um, the stuff from my childhood was really, it really got me worse than I, than I thought. I didn't, I didn't, I thought I was dealing with it well until that, until they exposed it. And um, so. Have you been able to resolve some of that? No. No, I'm, I'm on medication. Mm-hmm. Do you go to therapy, though? I go to therapy? therapy. I've gone to therapy for four years and um, a psychiatrist for a year. Yeah. Well, I, sometimes when you have these childhood experiences, they may stay in your psyche forever. Oh, exactly. It's a demon that cannot be removed. I mean, I was, I was so little. I was two when my mom left. And um, she would pop back into our lives um, whenever she wanted. And... When she did, it was usually to um, make me feel bad, mm -hmm. make me feel ugly. She would actually say that, and that I was a mistake, and I shouldn't have ever been born. 
and that um, I was fat and I looked like my dad and um, you know it's it stays it, it stays. stays it sticks I know yeah do you ever see your mom now no okay no I don't I don't she lives in the desert some place with all the other weirdos <laughs> <laughs> I don't brush my teeth, <clears throat> I don't shave my legs, I don't tweeze my eyebrows, I um, don't get dressed, I don't take a shower, I am in my pajamas every day, every single day, all day, laying on the bed um, with my everything within reach, a puzzle book, my remote. Um, my cell phone and um you I mean become a reckless. I have and and a lot of that is since the swan. It's it's since the swan. My my brain was just so tweaked out and um so I'm on on um oh, Zoloft for my um depression. bipolar and depression mm -hmm. and yeah, I don't change my bed sheets. I don't do anything but eat and cry. You still cry a lot? I, I cry every day. Wow. I cry every day. And do you cry because you're sad or because it's cathartic or you miss your husband or what is it? What makes you so sad, Lori? I miss my husband a whole lot. It's fun to be married to somebody so wonderful, isn't it? Well, you're a beautiful woman, and you have such a heart, a sweet, tender heart. Thank you. Yes, it's sweet. And, you know, we will just keep you in our thoughts and our prayers that everything sorts itself out for you. And I just want to thank you for being so brave and so wonderful to come here and tell us your story because I know it's painful it and is. it's not over. It's not. No, it's not. And I also deal with what's to come, you know, the maintenance. My boobs are going to expire <laughs> in three years. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh my gosh, what happens then? I don't know. <laughs> well, I never thought about uh, that. Yeah, they, they expire, How you know. That? Well, you know, it takes a brave person to sit in front of a camera and bare your soul and tell people what you've had done to yourself with plastic surgery and also about the tragedy that you've lived as a child. But I want to commend you for just being a sweet, wonderful person. I can tell that from you. You're just a wonderful person. Thank you for coming today and uh, spending time with us. So from Cynthia Rowland, Ageless Sisters, saying goodbye.